Lot, the gateway to the Kruger National Park and a farming town renowned for its production of sugarcane, subtropical fruit and winter vegetables. Last year, the town played host to its first ever Donaldson Cross Country Championship race and it proved to be so popular that competitors and spectators didn't hesitate to return. We're in the beautiful province of Mpumalanga for the third leg of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. In surrounds such as these, it's hardly surprising that this race in Malalan was arguably one of the most enjoyable ones last year. This time around, we're back for the Unkmazi 450. The town has a population of around 3,500 people and as is often the case when it comes to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship, the place comes to a virtual standstill as the cars rolled in in preparation for the tricky terrain. The event turned into a carnival of sorts as people of all ages took to the sights and sounds of the magnificent metal chariots on display. Of course, it's all about the cars and all eyes were on the rivalry between Ford Racing and Castrol Toyota, with Manfred Schroeder and Yapi Bardnost having taken the lead from defending champs Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy in Class T following the Moy River event. The Ford is now leading the championship, which is uh, something that we have to now rectify, so uh, we're going to give it a, a full go this weekend. Meanwhile, Regent Racing celeb navigator this time around, former Bafana Bafana captain Neil Tovey. You're going to make mistakes, I know. <laughs> I know I'm going to make mistakes, but uh, it's how quickly I can recover and get him back on track, yeah. Another celeb navigator of sorts, Dakar Rally biker Brett Cummings, doing the honours for Thomas Rundle. It's going to be a steep learning curve for myself. Um, got the road book this morning, going to mark it quickly and uh, give it a bash. A new addition to the region racing stable, well-known rally driver Mohamed Musa. We've done you know, a fair amount of rallying, seven years national rally. But this off-road seems completely different. There's dust to contend with, there's other cars that you're seeing, there's you know, all these other elements. Make it worse, I'm in a left-hand drive for the first time ever, so it's, it's going to be a big, uh, I think a huge weekend of school. That, that's what it's going to be about. We're just here to learn and that's, that's what it's about. So confirmation of the standings in the production vehicle category, Schroeder and Badenhorst leading the way in their Atlas Copco Ford, 11 points clear of Castrol Toyota's Leroy Poulter and Rob Howie, while Taylor and Murphy are third. From the productions to the specials, the championship is loaded with father and son teams and there's one particular team that is leading the way after just two races, Gerard and Harness to proceed, who captured victory at the Toyota dealer 450. What do you expect uh, from today's race? Yeah, here is nogal a sugar bell, as a sugar bell altijd geweest. Hier is zeker dat is nou. Hier weet hy ton ook iets wat jy inry en dis glad. So ons sal maar sien. Dis nie open gaan nie. Dis kyk en ry. The pair are 15 clear of another family affair, the Solvalds, Quentin and Cully, while Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray are third overall. First up, qualifying and the battle between Toyota and Ford resumed. Taylor and Murphy hitting the route first amid much cheering from the locals. And they were soon followed by Schroeder and Bardnorst. Schroeder having taken over the seat for the season following Chris Fiss's injury at Dakar. It was in fact the other Castrol Toyota team of Polter and Howie that shone, the pair covering the terrain in just over an hour and 25 minutes in their Hilux. Taylor and Murphy were second quickest despite experiencing a flat 5Ks from the finish. Local favourites Johan and Bad Nahorn from Malalan Toyota were third, having overshot en route a couple of times. Christian Deploy and Henk Janser van Furen broke the turn into domination, fourth fastest in their RFS Motorsport Ford Ranger. Fifth on the grid for Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson from Atlas Copco, the pair lost their break 75 k's in. The first BMW. This one belonging to Henny de Klerk and Johan Smallberger from Treasury One, a sixth place for them.
Michael Whitehouse and George Myberg were the fastest from Regent Racing, seventh despite some navigational nightmares. The fastest Class S competitor, Lo De Brain and Rian Kraling from Rubicon Racing. They struggle in the dust of Marsh and Toby. In the newly formed Class G, Brian Kemper and Jaco Swart from Regent Racing continued their great form, quickest in their Polaris. An excellent performance from Polter and Howie, they'll start at the front, followed by Taylor and Murphy and the horns from Mullalan. A Hilux heavy 1-2-3. Over to the specials and Evan Hutchison and Danny Stassen from Motorwhite looking for a good performance to reignite their championship campaign. First start in Class P, Colin Matthews and Rodney Burke from Century Racing. It was the Sulvalts from Elegant Fuel that set the pace though. Quinton and Cully were outstanding at an event which they considered to be their local race, fastest in their bat venom. A good run from Hutchison and Stassen saw them claim a second in category and sixth overall. On a course Evan described as being very tricky. Third in qualifying, the Duplessis, Gerard and Hardis, continuing their outstanding start to the season. The pair have captured two podiums in two races. Can they make it three out of three? Just 15 seconds slower, Laurence Duplessis and Hilly LaRue, son of Jox LaRue in their Zarco. Rounding off the front five, Brett Parker and VZ Fancel in their Cisanani Plastics Jimco. Keith Macanetti and Moelosi Boroto lost their power steering, but that didn't stop them from finishing as the sixth quickest in category and first in class. A dream run from the Silvolts, fastest in class, meaning they'll begin fifth on the road behind four production vehicles, not too far back, Hutchison and Stassen, followed by the Duplessis. With racing done for the day, it was now the turn of the mechanics to take over, some having to do a lot more work than others, as vehicles were fixed, tuned and tested amidst the stunning surroundings of Mpumalanga, ahead of the all-important second and final day of the Nikomasi 450. Dawn breaks in Malalan, a beautiful morning in a beautiful town. As excitement builds ahead of the start, some last-minute touch-ups to the cars before they take their place on the grid. With qualifying done and dusted, it's now on to race day and behind me, it's a familiar sight seeing a Toyota Castrol Hilux. However, it's not driven by Anthony Taylor. In fact, it's Leroy Poulter getting his first pole position. And can he get his first win in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship? We'll see at the Nkomazi 450. Let's catch up with the leader in the specials, Quinton Silvalt. I had two flats yesterday, so it was quite a tough one. We got a lost, we got lost a couple of times, but other than that, uh, the car's really, really strong. So uh, looking forward to a good race today, and just keep it on the road and keep going and not get out. That's the plan. He and Dad Kelly are fifth on the list, behind three Toyota Hiluxes and a Ford Ranger. It's the first time in front for Palter and Howie. Can they also capture their first win together? Two men who are very much used to winning together, Taylor and Murphy, the defending champions in the hunt for their second victory of the season. The hometown heroes, Johan and Werner Horn, third out of the blocks. Paul and Howie had a very tough time at the Dakar rally, but that experience has undoubtedly strengthened them as a team. And they're going from strength to strength here. Yeah. 
no puncture problems yet for Taylor and Murphy. The NAV did suffer from some motion sickness during qualifying, what with a constant light dark tunnel from driving in the sugarcane. But he adapted his helmet to keep the peripheral vision shaded and it seems to be working. The Horns loving life in Class T and their new Toyota Hilux still lying in third place having not suffered from their overshooting problems from the day before. Christian Duploy and Henk Janser van Furen had a fairly difficult 2013 and they've had a tough start to 2014 but that said, setting up a new car can be extremely difficult. Firing in front in the specials, Quinton and Kali Silva, the elegant fuel pair having no problems so far and absolutely loving the route. Second in class, the defending champions Hutchison and Stassen. The motorite racing pair look to turn around a slow start of the season. Their bat Viper looking solid on what Evan said was a very good route. And by the looks of things, very muddy. Lying in third place, the Duplessis family, Kiron and Hardis. Fourth in class, Laurence Duplessis and Hilly LaRue, doing well to negotiate their way through the river. Fifth in class, T, Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson from Atlas Coco. Then Nissan Navarro flying in the open terrain. In complete contrast, we've hit the sugar cane. Parker and Van Sale winding their way through in fifth place in the special vehicle category. Plenty of mud all over the show. Proving no match though for the Treasury 1 BMW of De Klerk and Smallberger. The pair currently sixth in class. This is undoubtedly one of the most well-attended races on the calendar. And why not, when you can see competitors like these in action? And there is action aplenty. The heavy mud making it difficult to see the tyre barricades. And some teams taking a shortcut as a result. Whitehouse and a brain following Makanetti. Dakar heroes Thomas Rundle and Brett Cummings, 8th in class in their DMAC Baden Toyota Hilux. The second vehicle in class S, Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer from 4x4 Mega World. Well, this river is a lot deeper than it looks, as John Thompson and Maurice Matten are currently finding out. Their aquaplaning, Zarko Magnum currently first in Class P, but hot on their heels, Lance Trithui and Jeff Minnett in the Mortimer Tour to bat. The pair now being allowed past by Thompson. 